morning, everybody. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Praise God. Am I on? Is this working? Praise God. God is good, isn't He? Wow, what a great attendance on this holiday weekend. I was wrong again. Told my wife this morning, ain't nobody going to be there today. I got so many texts and phone calls and emails of folks going. But it's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord this morning. God bless you. I, uh, I do want to encourage you to be back this evening for service. You know about once or twice or three times a year, I teach on Sunday night instead of preach. And tonight's going to be one of those nights. I'm going to speak tonight on the subject of prophecy and give a prophecy update from the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. If you want to read that today, there's only 18 verses, three divisions of the chapter, and uh, you'll want to read that if you can today before you come back tonight, Revelation 13. And again, I'll be doing a prophecy update. I will be on the floor very early tonight. We're going to open the service. We're going to have one song from the praise team, then the offering, another song, and then I'll be on the floor. So if you come late, you're going to miss the beginning of my study tonight, and I don't think you want to miss it with everything that's going on in our world right now. You would have to be spiritually deaf, dumb, and somewhat ignorant not to know that everything we're hearing in the media today screams Jesus is coming. We're going to talk about all of that, all of that tonight. The President of the United States has declared today a day of prayer for Houston and the Houston area. And before I get into this morning's message, I want us to do that. I want us to pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Houston, uh, the South Texas District, which is mainly Houston Metro, uh, goes all the way out to the Lufkin area, uh, not quite to Austin. It is a, a, a large part of Texas there, again, mainly the Houston Metro area, and uh, they have about 350 churches, many of our churches are underwater, not one or two, but many of our churches are underwater. Many of the pastor's homes and many of our saints' homes are underwater, not counting all of the people we don't know or we don't have any connection to. Uh, I've, I've preached many times in that area and in Port Arthur, preached for the district superintendent there a number of times, preached their camp meeting last summer in that area. And I know many of them, some of our greatest churches in all of North America are in that area. And uh, I, am, uh, I am very concerned. I don't mind telling you I'm very concerned. They're saying that it could be not just weeks or months, but probably a year or more before everything gets back to normal in that area. The city of Port Arthur is completely underwater. Every, every house, more than 20,000 homes, every house, not some of them, every house in the city is underwater in Port Arthur, Texas. And uh, it's not over yet because all of their lakes and all of their uh, reservoirs and all of their rivers are overflowing and they have to open up the dams and they have to release some of the water. It has to go somewhere. And so there's really not even much reason for them to clean up at this point because the city over the next two or three weeks will, will have to release water by the dams. And when they do, it'll flood again. And so the flooding is a long ways from being over. I talked to the district superintendent there this morning. He did a television interview with uh, 
I think it was Good Morning America at 5 o'clock this morning, and I watched that and then uh, watched it on my, on my telephone, and then he and I got on the phone afterwards and talked about it, and it's devastation, folks. I'm telling you, it's devastation in bold capital letters. If you heard anything about the president and his wife going to Texas yesterday and serving food and handing out water and, and diapers and supplies and all of that. Uh, uh, it, it, I think it's okay to tell you this, but all that happened at a United Pentecostal church, the church that is uh, pastored by our district superintendent there, Brother Gurley. The uh, public meeting that they held where the president and his wife both spoke was at Brother Gurley's church and where the food was given out and all the supplies and where all the tractors and trailers are in the parking lot. That's our United Pentecostal Church where that all happened. And so uh, uh, there is, there is a, a, a very real connection, if you please, between us and what's happening there. The Bible said when one member suffers, we all suffer. When one feels pain, we all feel pain. Can you say amen? Would you step out of where you are and let's join hands across this fellowship? The Bible said if any two or three of you agree touching one thing, there's two things I want you to pray about. Listen to me before we pray and while we're moving around. There's two things. I want you to pray that God will give the Houston area relief. I want you to pray that God will give them relief from the flooding and relief from all that's going on there, water problems and utility problems and houses that, that are flooded, some even destroyed, automobiles that are lost in the flood. Pray that God would give them relief in those areas. And uh, that's our first prayer. The second prayer, and you don't want to hear this, is that Hurricane Irma is bearing down on the United States and will be here this coming week. The problem with Hurricane Irma is it's now three times stronger right now today. 110 mile an hour winds going to be 140 mile an hour winds within a day or two. And one of the projections is that it hits the Carolinas. We've been through hurricanes before that hit the Carolinas and we know what it does to Tidewater, to Hampton Roads, right? So I want you to pray the second prayer. I want you to pray God will turn Hurricane Irma back out into the Atlantic Ocean before it ever gets here. God, make it take a turn and go out into the ocean. You say we have a right to pray that kind of prayer? Oh, yeah. The God that we serve is in control. He's in charge. Can you say amen? Let's all pray. Grab somebody's hand and pray in Jesus' name. Father, we're praying right now for Houston, for all of those that are impacted by Harvey, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would give them strength. God, what a responsibility their leaders are carrying. What a job before all of the people. God, I'm praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would touch them and strengthen them, give them peace of mind. God, I pray that you would relieve the pain. I pray, God, that you would give us a miracle concerning the flood waters. I pray, Lord God, that you'd give us a miracle concerning the housing. I thank you for the way that America's responding to the needs in that area. I thank you, Lord, for the response of the church to the needs in that area. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that, that those houses that are lost or destroyed or partially destroyed, that there's an avenue for them to rebuild their lives. I pray, God, that you would help make all of those processes smooth. I pray right now against Hurricane Irma. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I take authority over that thing. I command it to turn, to turn into the Atlantic Ocean and to dissipate there. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would spare our nation any part of our nation, all the way from Texas, all the way to New York City, any part of our eastern coastline, I pray that you would spare from another, another hit at this time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. God, you said if two or three agree touching one thing, it shall be done. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless me the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In the middle of all this junk going on, Brother Brad had a new baby this week. Mama and baby are doing good. You know, you don't want to drink the water around this church. We have more babies here than you can shake a stick at, but we're going to grow a church one way or another, folks. <laughs> I like that kind of church growth because discipleship and all that's built right into it, and they're not going nowhere. They're going to stay right here. Praise God. Congratulations, Brother Brad. Hug your wife and baby and let them know how much we love them. Everybody said, in his presence. Say it again, in his presence. Turn to somebody and say, I love to be in his presence. Turn to somebody else and say, we are in his presence. My subject today is in his presence. Psalm chapter 16. It's on the screen. Psalm 16 and 11. David said, thou wilt show me the path of life. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 27, go over 11 chapters. Verse number 4. David said one thing. Have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, or the presence of the Lord, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. God bless you. You may be seated. As you are no doubt aware, the time of this writing, David is the king of Israel. He arguably is the most powerful king that Israel has ever had. No doubt the most famous king that Israel ever had lead them. He was a wealthy man. He had palaces in different parts of the country. He had one house built in the mountains that the Bible said was made from the cedars of Lebanon. He had a cedar home. He had a log cabin, if you please. Probably not a log cabin. But made from the cedars of Lebanon in the mountains. The awe and the wonder and the splendor of the nation of Israel was never greater than under the leadership of David. He was a powerful man. He was a warrior. He was one that was familiar with war and battle and there was no fear in him about going to battle and facing any foe and believing that God had the power and that God had the ability and that it was the will of God to deliver Israel from any situation. Of an undefeated army, Israel is never defeated under the leadership of David. He is a wise leader because he learned early to follow God, to seek God, to lean on God, to allow God to direct his decisions and his path. He enjoys the loyal support of the people of Israel 
They loved their king. They made up songs about him. When he rode his horse through cities, they would sing along the road that Saul has killed his thousands, but David has destroyed tens of thousands of the armies of Israel. And they, and, and they sang folk songs about him, about their love for him and their loyalty to him and their admiration of him as their leader. He literally had everything that a man could want in the way of worldly possessions, worldly fame, worldly fortune, worldly adoration, worldly loyalty. There literally was nothing that David could want. And yet, in Psalm 27 and 4, he said, there's one thing that I want more than I want anything else. There's one thing that I desire of the Lord. And I, the king, the king of the most powerful nation on earth at that time, the king of the people of Israel, the leader of an undefeated army, the owner of magnificent palaces and the wealth of the land belongs to me, but none of that satisfies. There's one thing that I desire of the Lord, and I'm going to seek after it. I want to dwell in the house or the presence of the Lord all the days of my life. Now the reason that in the Scripture David would say that I might dwell in the house of the Lord because it was the house of the Lord where you had to go to feel God in His dispensation. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. David didn't have the Spirit of the living God in him, dwelling in him as you do. David wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus. In fact, that name was not even yet given. David didn't have the personal relationship with God that you and I have. And so to be in His presence, you had to go to the house of the Lord. And David said, there's something about what I feel when I get there. There's something about what I feel when I'm in that place. There's something about being in His presence. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Somebody said, Amen. We make a big deal around here about being in, feeling, and experiencing the presence of the Lord. And you need to know that we've made a very real commitment to feeling the presence of the Lord every time we come together. I could go take a seat and let any of my pastors, any of my staff, and probably most of you come and take the pulpit. And you know what I'm going to say when I start out with, we only have 52 Sundays a year. You know how I'm going to finish that. We can't afford to waste one of them. We can't afford to go through the motions one single Sunday. We can't waste one Sunday morning. We can't waste one Sunday night. We can't waste one Wednesday night. We can't waste one youth service. We can't waste one hyphen gathering. We can't waste one couple service. We can't waste one men's prayer meeting. We can't waste one women's ladies night out. Because because every time we come together, we've got one overriding goal. And that is we want to feel the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout yes. I don't care who you came here to see. I don't care what you came here to show off. I don't care what your secondary agenda is. It all means nothing. There's only one real reason for being here. I want to feel God. There's only one real reason for getting up on Sunday morning and putting on a suit of clothes and fixing your pretty hair, sis. There's only one real reason for getting in your car and driving the distance to this address. And that is that we can come into the presence of God if we get here and don't feel Him. It is a wasted and lost opportunity. Oh, I'm going out to eat with so-and-so after church. Big deal. What are you missing right now? 
waiting for me to say amen. Hello? I wore a new suit today and nobody paid attention to it. Big deal. That's not what we're here for. The Bible said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Lift up his name. Magnify his name. We come here to feel God. We come here to commune with him. We come here to worship him. We come here to feel his presence. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And that's what I'm going to seek after all the days of my life. Somebody shout yes. Shout yes. We want to feel God every day. We want to feel God everywhere we go. We want to feel God in the good times and the bad times. Hello? We want to feel God when things are going great and when things are going bad. We want to feel God when the enemy's attacking. Say, oh, preacher. The reason I'm not worshiping today, the old devil been on me. Well, guess what? You're doing exactly what he wants you to do. <laughs> Sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Sit there and have a pity party. But let me make you understand, you're in the presence of the King of Kings. You're in the presence of the Lord of Lords. You're in the presence of the great God that created this universe with nothing more than a spoken word. And if you can get into His presence today, I said if you can get into His presence today. We want to feel His presence when life isn't fair. We want to feel His presence when all other hope is gone. We want to feel His presence when we feel all alone. We want to feel His presence when we feel powerless to do anything about life's circumstance. I want to feel the presence of the Lord. Can I tell you that no matter the situation and no matter the circumstance that we find ourselves in, there is an answer. In His presence is fullness of joy. And that is right hand pleasures forevermore. So you don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what you're going through, but I know what the answer is in His presence. Preacher, you don't know what they said to me. I don't, but I know what the answer is in His presence. Preacher, you don't know what the doctor told me. I don't know what the doctor said, but I know what the answer is in His presence. Get into the presence of the Lord. Get into the presence of the Lord. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anything stop you. Preacher, nobody on my rows worshiping. Then change rows right now. Get up and move. Tell your husband, tell your wife, tell your best friend. Either start worshiping or go sit somewhere else. I need to get into the presence of God. I need to get into the presence of God. I've got something going on in my life that nothing else can fix. Nothing else can heal. Nothing else can satisfy. I've got to get into the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout yes. In His presence is fullness of joy. I want you to know we're a blessed people. We are a blessed people. God meets us every time we walk into this place. There is no such thing at Bible World as a service where God don't show up. Hello? He promised He would always show up. He don't even care if all 800 in our network today worships Him. You know what He said in the book of Matthew? Chapter 18, verse 20. He said, where two or three. You can have revival on your row, friend. You just got to get one or two more to get with you. It don't matter what everybody else is here doing. Turn to somebody on your row and say, let's me and you have a revival. Let's me and you have a move of God. Let's me and you feel the presence of God today. 
where two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, I'm there in the midst of them. I want you to know, my friend, if you can get one person with you, get two people with you, and start worshiping Him and lifting up His name. He said, I'm going to visit you. I'm going to be in the midst of you. I'm going to let you feel my presence. The songwriter wrote the words years ago, he's as close as the mention of his name. Jesus, Jesus, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after. I want to be in your presence. Say amen, somebody. The opportunity to enter into the presence of the Lord at will must never be taken for granted. What God does when we come together must never be taken for granted. You ain't going to like what I'm fixing to say, but I'm going to say it. Smile and act like you're okay with it, and I'll get through it real quick. Put an ugly look on your face, and we'll still be here at noon. Hello? This ain't where you make your grocery list. This ain't where you answer your text, your emails. Somebody's on their phone right now. Reach over and slap them. Just reach over and smack them. Say, have respect for the house of God. Just reach over and clock them. This ain't where you come and sit down by somebody you know so you can have a good conversation and get caught up because you haven't seen each other all week long. This isn't where we come to show off our clothes and our hairdo and make sure everybody sees our new car in the parking lot. Uh Uh-uh. Honey, we only come here for one reason, and that's to get into the presence of God. And we better never take that for granted. Somebody shout yes. We must never allow the presence of the Lord to become common or normal or ordinary. You walk into this place and you're sitting there and all of a sudden you just feel like a little something that raises the hair on the back of your neck. It's just a little gentle moving, just a little gentle touch at first. You don't shrug your shoulders. You don't shrug that off. You don't act like that don't matter. You don't act like that's nothing to get excited about. I watched Fox News on my phone this morning. Five o'clock this morning, I was up talking to Brother Gurley and, and, and watching his interview on, on the on the on the phone and then I went ahead and watched some of the coverage of the president and his wife and I don't care if you voted for him or not there was as many people in that church yesterday that didn't vote for him that did it's amazing how many people got selfies with him and when the news asked him said oh you're a Trump supporter they no, I didn't vote for him well you're just hugging his neck you're just kissing on him you're just you're getting selfies with him you're smiling he said well yeah he's the president of the United States You can hate his guts, but I guarantee if he pulled in this parking lot, y'all trample people trying to get out the door. Oh, you can lie. You can play your little games and lie and say, I wouldn't go across the street saying, oh, yeah, you would. And you're lying if you say you wouldn't. Hello? I don't care if you voted for him or not. It doesn't matter. I'd have voted for all 16 Republicans that were running before I'd have voted for him. But he's the president. He's our president. And I would love to get to meet him. I'm going to be honest about it. And I saw Democrats and Independents and Bernie supporters and Hillary supporters getting selfies with him and all excited about a chance to meet him yesterday. And here we are today in the presence of the King of Kings. He's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. He's not an Independent. He don't have an agenda different than yours. He's not running against you. He's not on somebody else's side. He's here. He has all power in heaven and earth. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He can do anything. Nothing's impossible for Him. And you're going to sit there like a ward on a pickle? (laughs) 
A.W. Tozier wrote something that impacted me years ago. He said, I want the presence of God Himself or I don't want anything at all to do with religion. I want all that God has or I don't want any. If there's one thing wrong with this generation is that you're content to live with less than God's best. You're content to live with less than what God has to offer you. You're content to go through the motions and play church and play religion and go through your little traditions and live within the parameters not that God made but you made for yourself. And you call that living for God. I'm telling you, friend, either we get all of Him. I want all He's got for me. I said, I want all He's got for me. I don't want nothing that religion has to offer. But I want everything that God has to offer. Hello? Hello? Everybody said amen. Why, preacher? Because in His presence, His fullness of joy. In His presence, His fullness of joy. In His presence, His fullness of joy. We don't all believe that. Because when we're down and out, we think going to a ball game is going to make us feel better. Well, preacher, I've just not been feeling good. I'm going fishing. Preacher, I ain't been feeling good. I'm going to a concert. Preacher, I ain't been feeling good. I'm going to a ball game. You cannot say that in a tides ball game, there's fullness of joy. About half of you support the Washington Redskins. Bunch of you support Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. Meanest ball players on the face of the earth come out of Pittsburgh. Any Pittsburgh fans here? Forgive me. God bless you. Love you. But you know they're the meanest human beings on the face of the earth. You can't say that at a Washington Redskins football game there's fullness of joy. Especially not the way they've been playing. You can't say that at a Washington Nationals game there's fullness of joy. I preached in Cincinnati last Sunday. You can't say at a Cincinnati Reds ball game there's fullness of joy. Or a Pittsburgh Pirates. Hello? Hello? Tom Brady, probably one of the famous, if not the most famous quarterback in all of America. Last year, my staff all saw it. His wife called me. I didn't even know who she was when she told me her name. One of these, not one of these, some of these politicians that's been talking to me and eating with me and spending time with me was in a meeting with her and her husband where he was speaking and she told them about something she needed from God and one of the politicians said you need to call Jack Cunningham pastor in Chesapeake Virginia and ask him to pray for you so I get a phone call from this woman that I don't even know who she is I don't know she's his wife because she don't use his name I don't know nothing about her. I prayed for her, talked to her, encouraged her. I hung the phone up and I told Gary, I said, Gary, I just got a strange phone call from this woman. She said her husband plays football, but I don't recognize her name. And when I told him what her name was, Gary nearly fell out on the floor. He said, Dad, you ain't, kid you, you ain't serious. I said, yeah, that was her I just talked to. He said, she is Tom Brady's wife and she's actually more famous than he is. You know what those people that live in those circles know? They know you can't say in a football game is fullness of joy. You know what the politicians know? 
I got politicians calling me all the time for prayer. One of them drove all the way from South Carolina, Rick, just, just a week ago. Drove up here, got here at night, had dinner with me, spent the whole next day because he said God told him in South Carolina to drive to Virginia and have me pray for him. He said, I want you to lay your hands on me and I want you to pray for me. God told me to come. He just wrote a letter to the chaplain of the White House, Mr. Strack. I can read the letter to you where he said, I've traveled across this nation, I've met thousands of preachers, but there's one preacher you've got to get to come to the White House and minister to the White House staff. His name is Jack Cunningham, he lives in Chesapeake, Virginia, and you've got to get him to the White House to minister to the staff there. I have the letter on my phone, my computer that he wrote. What are you trying to say, Brother Cunningham? I don't care what arena you think is cool. All of them know that this is what's cool. All of them out there seek and they're hungry for and thirsty for what you and I feel in here all the time. What we cannot do is ever take it for granted. We can never come to the place, well, this is just another Sunday. This is just another worship service. This is just another message. We're just at church one more time. Oh, no, honey. We're in the presence of God. He said, where any two or three of you gather together in my name, I'm going to be in the midst of them. God is in this house right now. Somebody shout yes, shout yes. Only in the presence of the Lord can we find fullness of joy. It's not in a picnic, it's not in a college lecture, it's not in a ball game, it's not in a political event. It's in the presence of the Lord. Somebody shout yes. Sam Storm wrote that joy is not necessarily the absence of suffering. It is the presence of God. Have you ever noticed how people that are hurting, people that are hurting still have joy? Faye Stewart called me at 6.55 this morning. Talked to her on her way to the hospital. James was admitted last night. They had taken the feeding tube out prematurely. He's actually in surgery this morning. They're putting the feeding tube back in. They're working on his throat and making it larger so he can actually eat. But when they took the feeding tube out Tuesday all the way till now, he hadn't been able to eat or drink nothing because his throat is so messed up. So they had to put it back in. All that's happening this morning. And when I talked to Sister Stewart, I said, Sister Stewart, I'm so sorry that you guys are having to deal with this again. She said, oh, Pastor. We just got word that there's no cancer. And she said, this is just a blip on the screen. This is just a little setback. God's been good to us. She said, call James on his phone before they take him in. I called him on his phone. We got to talking, laughing, goofing off on the phone. Here he is going back into surgery, going to have a feeding tube put back in. And he said, they're also going to stretch my throat. I've been doing that for 60 years. I'm never going to need that surgery. I got that one covered. He said, they're going to stretch my throat. I said, I'll have them make it big. He said, why? I said, because you and me is going to have steak as soon as this is over. Me and James got to laughing on the phone and telling each other stories. And here they are in the room getting ready to take him out. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to tell you that it's only because you know the presence of God that you can have joy even in the middle of suffering. You can have joy in the middle of pain. You can have joy in the midst of loss. You can have joy in the midst of sickness. You can even have joy in the midst of death. Because in His presence is fullness of joy. In His presence we find healing. In His presence we find peace and joy and hope. 
It's in His presence that we get answers for our questions. It's in His presence that we are made strong. It's in His presence that we find deliverance and victory and blessing and rest. It's in His presence that we get direction and understanding. It's in His presence that miracles and, and salvation flows. Oh, I want to be in His presence. I want to be in His presence. I want to be in His presence. Can somebody say amen? I love what Moses said. If I had to choose one of my favorite passages in the Bible, this would be very high on the list. Moses said in Exodus 33, verses 14 and 15, And God said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Look how Moses responded. Then Moses said to God, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Let me give you the Cunningham translation of that verse. He said, If your presence ain't going with us, we ain't going either. If your presence isn't going with us, we're staying right here. My God, have mercy. What would happen if we sought His presence every day of our life? What would happen in our life if we valued His presence more than we value anything else in this life? It's amazing how many things we've allowed to nudge the move of God and the presence of God and a relationship with God to the sidebar in our life. It's amazing how many things we've given a more prominent position than the presence and power of God in our lives. I wonder what would happen if we would adopt Moses' attitude? God, if your presence aren't with us, we ain't going there. Somebody shout yes. yes. Without God, without God, nothing is possible. But with God, nothing is impossible. Mmm. The Bible said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Cunningham translation again. If God be for us, it don't matter who's against us. It don't matter if it's a person, an organization, a city, a state, a nation, or a world. If God be for us, who can be against us? Having God on our side doesn't mean sailing on a boat with no storms. It means having a boat that no storm can sink. I've already had a busy morning. I talked to one lady for 30, 40 minutes this morning at 7.30, 8 o'clock. She was telling me how much anxiety she's dealing with and how much fear. And I said, I've known you since you were born. You're a married woman now. You're successful. You're a college graduate. you got all this going on in your life. But let me tell you from my perspective, I've watched you overcome obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle in your 30 years or so on this earth. I've never seen anything sink you. I've never seen anything take you away from God. I've never seen anything that could stop you from being successful. You know, every now and then we need to talk to ourselves. My life's had a lot of storms in it, but there's never been a storm able to sink my boat. I'm closing. I want to tell you that entering into the presence of the Lord is not difficult. Psalm 145 and 18 said, The presence of the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him. To all that call upon Him in truth. Now let me ask you, is there one group of people on earth that owns that verse more than we do? David didn't just say, He's close to all them that call on Him. He went on and clarified it. All them that call on Him in truth. 
There's something about you, friend. You need to understand this. You're not a nobody. You're not nothing. You're not a dirt bag. You're not a loser. You're nothing this world put, tries to make out of you or any category they try to put you in. You're not powerless. You're not weak. You're not anemic spiritually or physically. You are not a nobody. You are somebody. You're the child of a king. You've got the power of the Holy Ghost residing in you. You've got the name of Jesus applied to your life. He gave you power when He gave you the Holy Ghost. You are somebody. And He said, I'm going to be close to anybody that calls on Me in truth. And we're people of truth. If you'll call on Him, He really is as close as the mention of His name. You have two choices. You have two choices. You can sit there and let the devil whoop you. Or you can not care what anybody else thinks. And come out of that seat like a wild man from Borneo. I don't care who knows it. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to lift up my voice. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to stomp my feet. I'm going to do whatever i got to do to get the attention of God. Come over here, Austin. Sit right here on this top cell. Everybody else can be seated. Sit on there. Close your eyes now. Feel around like you're blind. There's a blind man sitting by the roadside. And a crowd starts passing by. The blind man reaches out, gets hold of somebody's coat. What's going on? I hear a lot of feet. I hear a lot of voices. I hear a lot of people. Somebody finally stops and says, Well, didn't you hear? Jesus is coming by. And the blind man said, you mean Jesus is fixing to be? Yeah, he'll probably be coming in front of you. And the Bible said that old blind Bart started saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus didn't respond. So he says it a little louder, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Still no response. A little louder, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Still no response. Finally, he hollers out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Come on up here. You two right there, you two big boys. Y'all are the church. And while Bart's screaming at the top of his lungs, Jesus, the church folk says, calm down, Bart. No reason to act like that, Bart. Cool your jets. We don't got to be that loud. It's not necessary for you to act like that. You don't got to flail your arms. You don't have to stomp your feet. You don't have to make all that noise. And the church is trying to calm him down. But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said the more they tried to stop him, the louder Bart got. Because he made his mind up. Bartimaeus said, I'm going to get the attention of Jesus. This might be my only chance to be in the presence of the Lord. This may be my only chance to get a miracle. And the Bible said, he cried the louder. You know what the devil wants? He wants you to come to church depressed and leave depressed. He wants you to come messed up and leave messed up. He wants you to come lost and leave lost. He wants you to get into this atmosphere and do nothing and leave the same way you came. But the spirit of Bartimaeus needs to get a hold of some of you. That the enemy's been kicking you around. That life is turned upside down. That you don't know what the answer is. I'm telling you the answer is get into the presence of the Lord. Don't worry what anybody else thinks. Cry louder. Get the attention of God. Oh! Oh! Jesus! Thou 
Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Preacher, I don't know about all them other people. They're waving their arms, stomping their feet. Some of them get out in the aisle. Some of them get up around the altar. Are you willing to let them have something you want, but you're not willing to go out and get it? Are you willing to go home the same way you came? Are you willing to walk out of here in the same mess you walked in with? Or is there something inside of you that says, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I've got to get into the presence of the Lord. I've got to get into the presence of the Lord. Psalm 100 verse 4 said, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. God inhabits the praises of His people. Do you want God to dwell here? Do you want to be in the presence of God? God inhabits the praises of His people. Here's what God promises. James chapter 4 and verse 8. He said, draw nigh unto me. See, sis, right here. She just stepped from way back there, walked up here, got right up. You know what she's doing right now? God said, draw nigh unto me, and I'll draw nigh unto you. God's not a liar. If you'll just step out of where you are, if you'll just say, okay, here I come, God. I, I, I've got all this junk. I feel bad. I'm going through all kind of trash. But here I come, God. I'm going to draw nigh unto you. I've got my mind made up. I'm going to get into your presence. No matter what anybody else thinks, I'm going to get into your presence. Draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. Yeah, yeah, come on up here and worship. Worship like you haven't worshipped in a while. Worship like blind Bartimaeus. Worship like blind Bartimaeus. Jesus! Jesus! That's it. That's it. Don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Call on Him. Cry out to Him. Magnify Him. Worship Him. Glorify Him. Yes, yes, yes. He's here right now. You're in the presence of God. Make your needs known to Him. You're in His presence. He da 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 banda yo da ba ka ta ta yo da 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 ba ha yo. If you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can get it right now. If you need a refilling of the Holy Ghost, you can be refilled right now. If you need a miracle in your life, cry out to Him, Jesus, have mercy on me.
Don't miss this opportunity. You're in the presence of the Lord. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Get what you need from God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're in the presence of God. You're in the presence of God. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. In His presence is fullness of joy. In His presence is fullness of joy. In His presence is fullness of joy. Yes, yes, yes. Find somebody around you that needs ministered to and minister to them, will you? Find somebody close to you that needs ministered to and step out of where you are and minister to them. Everybody, if you've already got the victory, find somebody to minister to. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, these are your people. We love your presence. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. oh God, oh God, oh God. You're standing by someone that needs the Holy Ghost or they need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Make it your responsibility to help them. If you're standing by somebody that needs the Holy Ghost or needs a refilling of the Holy Ghost, make it your responsibility to help them. Yes, yes, yes. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, I love you. God, I worship you. God, I adore you. God, I magnify you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. Let God refill you with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Holy Ghost has fallen, church. God's filling and refilling with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's the Holy Ghost right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God, I love you. God, I magnify you. God, I glorify you. Hallelujah. If you happen, if you happen to have been on a fast at least three days this week, come and join me on the platform real quick. Everybody else keep praying. Everybody else keep praying. But if you fasted at least three days this week, come join me on the platform, will you? Come join me on the platform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Handa ya da ba koto yo da 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 ba haya. He da 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 banda yo da ba koto yo da 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 ba haya. He da 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 banda yo da ba koto yo da 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 ba haya. I wonder if everybody would raise your hands to heaven and pray in the Holy Ghost a little bit. Would you do that? Everybody lift your hands and be sensitive to the Spirit. Raise your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands to heaven and pray in the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And I yada boko to yada da 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 baha ta ta yada da baha ya. He da 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 ban da yada baha ka ta ta yada baha ya. If you're praying with somebody, don't stop. Don't stop. The church is backing you up right now. The church is backing you up. Holy Ghost praying. The church is backing you up right now.
Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're still praying, keep on praying. But if God filled you with the Holy Ghost this morning or refilled you with the Holy Ghost, would you come up on the platform with me? If God filled you or refilled you with the Holy Ghost, come up on the platform with me. If you were praying with somebody that got filled or refilled, send them up here. Sometimes folks are a little bashful. If you were praying with someone that got filled or refilled, send them up here. If you were filled or refilled with the Holy Ghost today, come on up here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got it good. Hallelujah. Anybody else, you were filled or refilled? Come on up here, man. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, Jacob. Anybody else filled or refilled with the Holy Ghost today? Now that we've settled that, of all that are in the audience, how many of you is glad you got in the presence of the Lord today? How many of you feel better since you've been in the presence of the Lord? Anybody here feel like God gave you a miracle in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah! Glory to God. All of you that's on the platform, congratulations and God bless you. I'm so happy for every one of you for what God is doing for you and what God has done today. Walk in it, please. Walk in what God is doing for you. Don't go back one step. Don't give in to the devil one step. Walk with God. Amen, church? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All of you that are on the platform, stay up here, if you will, until Sister Thorpe talks to you or someone from her team. Until she talks to you, she's got good information for you. If you've got some of your team that can help, let's get folks up here to take care of all of this. Also, those of you that are, that are here now, please help me today. Look around, think of somebody that's not here, and call them and tell them, you need to be in church tonight to hear the message on prophecy, a prophecy update. I'm going to deal with four or five major things that are taking place in the media right now and how they uh, relate to the scripture and how the scripture is unfolding in our day. You're going to want to be here to be a part of that Bible study. So help me, if you will, get a hold of somebody that's not here today and encourage them to be here tonight. And of course, all of you that are here today, be back tonight, please, if you will, and be a part of this study. They're going to have me on the floor by 645 is the goal. That's the goal, 645. I'm going to teach about an hour. You'll be out at 745 to 8 o'clock, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half. We know it's a holiday weekend, but there's so much unfolding prophetically this week. I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't deal with some of that 
this week. So be here tonight. Be a part of that. Again, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half, and then you can go right back to whatever your weekend vacation plans are. But be here to be a part of that tonight. Call someone else to get them here to be a part of that tonight. Amen? God bless you. Brother Crouch going to come.